Hello, Erin from Morehouse Farm here with today's knitting tip, which is how to do the shadow wrap short row. And you can see that my swatch, although it looks the normal width, definitely has height differences between the middle section and the edges. And that's because I've added these short rows to do shaping. So from here to here, and you can see that there's a little bit of a crisscross in there, but until I point it out, it's not all that noticeable. That's given me the extra room to do back and forth here in seamless construction, yet add more length here. So think about this, this could be a sleeve cap, right? that could be a heel, that could be perhaps uh, if you need extra room for um, some kind of shaping, maybe in something fancy like a hat, you name it. You have the ability to do this with what's called short rows. And I'm gonna show you how we do that. First, you need to know there's many different kinds of short rows and this one's called shadow wrap. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knit across to where I want that shaping to be. And it doesn't matter if you're knitting in the throwing style or the picking style, you're gonna work all the way across to wherever the pattern calls for there to be the first set of shadow wraps. And we're gonna do this one on the right side because that's what's facing us. You can see right here, I'm in the line with where my other ones have been. And what I do is I reach into the stitch below and I bring it up onto the needle and then I knit that stitch and put it back onto my left needle, okay? So now it looks like there's two and when I come back to them, I'm gonna knit them together or whatever the pattern instructs to work them together as if they were one stitch. And that's where this neat crisscross comes from. Okay, so now we're gonna turn and we're gonna work back to wherever the next one is supposed to be. And often the pattern will tell you either so many stitches or back to a marker, you name it. I'm just doing this freehand. It's almost like uh, jamming with a musical instrument. Kinda neat. So I get to the right place and I need to do the same thing on the wrong side here. This is almost a little easier because you pick up the purl bump, put it on the needle, and then purl it. You're just gonna make sure your yarn and your needles are positioned in the correct place. Slip that back onto the next needle and then turn. So when you come back through, because the shadow wrap is on this side, you're gonna work across And when you get to the right spot, see, there we go again with that. If your tension is tight, yank the yarn out because you're adding a little bit of extra tension by having to pull against the ball, okay? So now here I am. Now I'm gonna knit these two as if they were one. And notice the orientation of the stitch. If I go this way, I'm gonna twist them, right? And that creates an X in that direction. Make sure you're putting the needle through the hole and they'll lay flatter and then I can continue on for the rest of my row. Adding just a little bit of shaping along the way, or the pattern may tell you to go back and forth and work several, depending on what the shaping is you're trying to accomplish. So, now we need to work back across. We're on the wrong side here. So we're just gonna keep purling till we get to where we need to go and the shadow wrap that we just knit together with its buddy stitch is gonna look just like a regular stitch when we get to it. All right, can't even hardly see it. Is that a sentence? A whole lot of negatives there. So we get back across to where we wanted for our purl. See those two together? Purl them together as if nothing happened, All right? Just one stitch. And that's how that shaping gets created without leaving any holes. Because if you were to just knit back and forth the row of a section in the middle here and then try to pick it up along the side, you'd have some kind of join necessary. And again, once I block this, you'll hardly even notice what's going on there. Okay, let's try that one more time. If you are a thrower, right, and I said it doesn't matter which style you're doing this for, Pull out some more yarn, knit over to wherever the pattern is calling for, and I'm just gonna keep in with where I've been going. Yay, more knitting. Okay, looks like we got one more here. 
So pick that up, knit it, put it back on the left needle, turn, purl to where you need to go correctly to follow the pattern. And again, I'm just following the line because I'm jamming here, but read your pattern, whatever it says, how many it says to purl across to. And it looks like we were right about there. So pick up that purl bump, put it on the needle. Make sure again, you're purling through the stitch, not crossing, because if you try to grab that front leg, you're gonna cross it over. Put it back on the left needle, turn, and continue on your way. And you can see this really is making some shaping in here for me, whatever it may be. But that's how we're gonna work out, not only in this case, the shaping of the hand, but it's also gonna allow us to separate the thumb and the forefinger of our grown together mittens. And these are my model pair that I've been moving right along with. We're gonna do these shadow wraps here and notice how you can barely see them. There's a little bit of a dark spot, but as we come back and forth and do the shadow wraps, that gives us the ability to do more rows here, which is allowing this part to grow independently of the thumb. If we just kept knitting straight, we wouldn't have the extra room to be able to go like this. So that's what we're trying to accomplish. Happy knitting everyone.